Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. In today's video, we're going to be sewing the shorts from my summer sweatsuit pattern. This is a new pattern for me and I really love it. It's made out of knit fabric, so it's super, super comfortable and it's perfect for hot summer weather. It's really quick to show, so it's not going to be a super long video, and we're going to sew these entire shorts in one go. So these shorts are a short, short, vintage style. They have a curved cutaway hem. There's no side seam, which makes them faster to sew. And if your skin's ever sensitive to seaming, then these are really good shorts for you because they have a minimum of seams. There's an elastic waistband and we top stitch our hems. To sew the summer sweatsuit shorts, you only need two pattern pieces. It's number five, the shorts front and back, and number six, the waistband. So on the front pattern piece, we have our grain line, we have our length and shorten lines, and I have a whole video about how to lengthen or shorten the rise, and I'll put a link to that here. If you wanna lengthen the leg of the shorts, it's a little less straightforward because it has this curved hem, but I have some diagrams in the instruction booklet, and all you really need to do is you would trace the hem and then move the pattern piece up straight and trace it again. So you're just moving the curved line down lower. You can also straighten this out more or make it more curved if you like. The key is to keep your inseams equal. So this one should equal this one so that you get them lined up and matching when you sew it together. So on this pattern piece, we have a few notches. This notch right here is for the front. There are two notches here, which is for the back. And right here, this is for the side seam. So this is really your most important notch. You can kind of forget all the other ones. This one's gonna be your most important because we're going to use this notch when we attach the waistband. Here we have our waistband piece. It's just one piece and we're going to seam it together and then line up the seam with our back seam. However, if you're sewing sizes I through nine and using 45 inch wide fabric, then this pattern piece will be too big for your fabric. And I have instructions in the instruction booklet about how to make a two piece waistband. If you make a two piece waistband, you'll have a seam at either side and you will line those seams up with this notch. Let's talk quickly about fabric. For the shorts, I recommend a fabric that has four-way stretch, and that means it's going to stretch crosswise and lengthwise. And I recommend that you have at least 35% crosswise stretch. If you've never tested how much stretch you have before, it's pretty easy. You just pick up your fabric, this is on the crosswise, and with it folded in half, you can use your ruler and you kind of pinch at four inches and then you see how far you can pull it. So this fabric is really pretty stretchy. If your fabric will stretch from four inches to 5.4 inches, then you have 35% stretch and you have enough stretch. You can also have more than 35% more than stretch and that's totally fine. For this pattern, you don't need a lot of notions or supplies. It calls for one and a quarter inch wide elastic and I do have some of this in my shop. Um, you can also use another width of elastic if that's what you have on hand. And in the pattern, I give some advice about how to adjust the width of this pattern piece to match a different width of elastic. The other thing you'll need is a ballpoint needle. A jersey needle would probably also work. You just want something that will be suitable for your knit fabric. So ballpoint or jersey needle. To top stitch the hem of the shorts, you can use a twin needle. And I have a video about using a twin needle. Or you could use your ballpoint needle and do a zigzag stitch. 
We're also going to be top stitching the waistband and elastic together and for that I'll use my ballpoint needle and a zigzag stitch. The first three seams that we're going to do is first we will stitch the waistband at the center back or if you have a two-piece waistband it'll be at the side seams. We'll stitch that and then we will grab our front and back pieces and this is right sides together. The waistband is also right sides together and we're going to stitch both of the crotch curves. So let's go over to our sewing machine. Because these shorts are really fitted, I like to do a lightning stitch on the horizontal seams because it's going to be tighter and less likely to pull and strain while you're wearing the shorts. I have a whole video about s stitches that you can use to sew knit fabric and I'll put that in here. So this lightning stitch, I like to do it a little bit longer than the machine does. I do a 3.0 length and the only drawback to the stitch is that it's really, really tight. So if you're making your muslin, I recommend using a zigzag stitch or a basting stitch that you can take out much more easily than this lightning stitch or stretch stitch. Okay, I have my waistband here and I'm going to stitch this back waistband seam. One other thing I like to do when I'm sewing with this stitch is grab a piece of tissue paper or a tracing paper and put it under my fabric just to get started because sometimes when I start stitching, this needle will stitch right in a row a few times and it'll push my fabric down underneath the needle plate and that's a whole mess and we don't want that. So let's just stitch. This is a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And that tissue paper worked really well to keep my fabric out from underneath the throat plate. Then I just gently tear this paper away and we're going to press this seam open and then fold this in half with our wrong sides together and this will form our waistband. Let's set this to the side for now and we can work on the body of our shorts. So here I have my shorts and this is the front crotch curve and we're going to do the same thing, just stitch with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. <laughs> longer than the front and it might be helpful to just write a B on this back area so you remember that this is the back. You can do that right after you cut it out. We're going to do this just the same as those other two seams. I'm going to take this over to my serger and finish this raw edge. And I usually just turn my knife off and finish it. You could also use an overcasting stitch on your conventional machine to finish it. Or if your fabric really doesn't fray very much, like this one doesn't fray, you could leave the edge raw. I'm going to finish this edge and press my seams to the left. So both seams will go to the left and I will meet you back right here. Okay, I'm back. I have finished those seams and now I've pinned together the inseam and the important thing is you want to have your seam allowance nested right there and we are just going to do the same process as before going to finish this edge and let's go press our waistband and pin it onto our shorts. So here I have my waistband with this back waist seam stitched and my iron is ready to go. 
you want to make sure to test the heat on a scrap of fabric before doing it on your actual piece. Um, sometimes these stretchy fabrics can be pretty sensitive to heat, so you want to be careful. So I'm just going to fold this wrong sides together and make sure I have that back seam aligned nicely and just press it. And I will do that all the way around so we just have a folded loop. So now I have this all pressed and I have it folded in half so here's my back seam and I'm going to put a pin here in this raw edge that's halfway and then unfold it and match the pin with the seam and then put pins over on each end and those are the quarter points and these are our side seams that we are going to match to the notches in the waistband of the shorts, or the waistline of the shorts. So these two quarter points are going to match the notches in the waistline of our shorts. So here I have the shorts and these are right side out. I've gone ahead and when I finished my inseam, I went ahead and also finished the hem just for efficiency. So here, this is my back and I'm going to take this waistband and put my shorts inside and I'm going to align the center back seam with the seam in the waistband and if you are sewing a size I through 9 and using 45 inch wide fabric you'll be doing a two-piece waistband and your seams will match up with the notches so again we're just keeping it all right sides together and there you can see my little notch and matching it to the quarter point and just place a pin. And then the halfway point matches with the front. And finally, this other side matches the notch with the other quarter point. Okay, so we're gonna take this back to the machine and stitch around and we'll leave an opening right here so that we can put our elastic in our waistband casing. Here's the back of my waistband and again I'm going to use my lightning stitch and I'm going to start just about an inch and a quarter inch and a half away from that seam and you can decide what works better for you having the pants side up or the waistband side up. Pretty much the same. The only thing you have to watch out for is keeping everything aligned while you're stitching. So again, again I want to mention it's really important if you aren't sure about your size then I recommend not using the lightning stitch yet because it's really hard to unpick. getting close to where we started so I'll just go a couple more stitches do a little back stitch and here we have our waistband and here's our opening so I have my piece of elastic with a safety pin at the end and I've already figured out what length of elastic works for me so this might take a little bit of experimentation for you um, you'll just slide your safety pin end into the casing and pull it through. So it's a little bit fiddly. It'll take you a little bit of time. Um, you just wanna try to make sure you don't get your elastic twisted in the casing. And then the other thing you wanna be careful of is not to let the end of your elastic get sucked into the waistband. So the safety pin just gives you something to hold onto and you just push your fabric over the safety pin and then pull the fabric back down onto the elastic. So when you get to the end, you'll pull your elastic end through the opening and then overlap with the other end. And right now what I really recommend doing is 
hold these in place with your safety pin and then try on your shorts and this is just to make sure that you like the length of elastic that you've cut and you might even want to just like wear the shorts for a few hours and see how you like it and so you just get it in the casing pull the fabric to get it all even and then before you close this up go try it on so if you want the elastic tighter right now it's really easy just to overlap these ends more or if you need more elastic you might have to cut another piece or just overlap the ends less i've already tested this and i know i like this length so i'm going to pull these overlapped ends out and take my safety pin off. So I'm just gonna overlap about this much and put a pin in here. And then I'm going to set my machine to a zigzag stitch. And we're just going to put our elastic under here and stitch these ends together using a zigzag. Okay, so this is a little bit fiddly because you have all this fabric bunched up. Um, but this stitching really doesn't need to be beautiful because you're never going to see it again. <laughs> you just need it to be secure. So I like to do a box shape with my zigzag and then I do a little X in the middle too. That is all nice and secure and now we can put it back into our casing and we want to close up this hole. I'm just going to get all of those aligned, kind of flatten it out, put a pin in here to hold it. Um, and then I'm changing back to my lightning stitch and I'm just going to close up this hole. Okay, now all you need to do is finish this raw edge. I just finished all three layers of fabric together. I'm going to use my serger, but you can use the overlock stitch on your machine or a zigzag or just leave it raw. All right, now I'm ready to top stitch my shorts. I have my machine set to a zigzag stitch that's two and a half wide by two and a half long. So let's start with the waistband. Now I've gone ahead and prepped this and what you wanna do is just distribute the fabric on the elastic really evenly and then put a pin in about like every three to four inches to hold it in place. So you can see kind of the amount of excess fabric around the elastic is pretty even. So I'm gonna find the back of my shorts and use this as a starting place. I want to stitch two lines of top stitching with my zigzag stitch and I want to evenly distribute them so you can kind of draw a couple lines if you like to give you a guide. Um, you could draw them all the way around if you want or just start off here and figure out the good, a good position for your needle. So let's just do this top line first and I have matching thread all in there. And so what you wanna do while you stitch is stretch your shorts so that the elastic is flat. And we can just start going. It's good not to stitch over pins. So I just kind of grab it where one pin is and pull it flat. And then once I get to this pin, I pull that out and arrange my fabric so that it's evenly distributed and I pull that elastic flat just to my next pin. And then I stitch down again. So the reason we're using a zigzag is so that it has more stretch when we're wearing the shorts because we don't want that seam to pop when we're wearing them. Okay, now we'll stretch this one. And you just keep going all the way around. Okay, so now I'm approaching where I began and you want to be careful too not to pull it too much from the back because um, sometimes that can result in uneven stitching if you're really pulling your fabric. So 
so we'll just go right here and go right over where we started. You could do a little back stitch to secure it. And then, so we have one line all done, and now we want to stitch the second line. So it's really just the same thing. Um, I don't have pins this time because I took them out as I was sewing the first line. So I'll just grab about three or four inches down, pull it so the fabric is smooth, stitch to there, and repeat. Okay, I had a little bit of technical difficulty with my camera while I was sewing this, but I went ahead and stitched the second row. Um, you just want to be careful that while you're stitching it, try not to pull it through the back because sometimes that can result in uneven stitching. But you want to get something that kind of looks like this, should stretch and you should not have any stitches popping. Now let's use the same zigzag stitch settings to stitch our hem. So I've gone ahead, I finished this um, raw edge earlier and I've turned it up one half inch to the wrong side and pressed it and pinned it in place. So here's one little leg opening for you. Um, sometimes I'll use a twin needle, but this time I'm gonna do a little old uh, zigzag stitch. So most any machine should have this. And I like to start at the inseam where it's kind of gonna be hidden. And then I kind of, I wanna stitch really as close to that um, surged edge as I can. So I can just feel it with my fingers and I know that it's kind of lining up with my needle there. So let's just go ahead and stitch. And it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> you just stitch around. Um, I have the shorts inside out right now so that I can stitch with the right side on top. And sometimes some machines have prettier stitching on the top side. So that's one reason to stitch with your outside on top. Another reason is that you can make sure to really get um, an even distance from the edge of your fabric to your needle. And that's just any time you're doing a hem. Okay, we'll just overlap where we started and do a little back stitch. Okay, so that is one hem done and you can see it stretches, it doesn't pop. Um, and I was just trying to get really close to that edge because if you stitch far away from the edge, this fabric can kind of turn and it's and kind of create a lump and be annoying. So I'm gonna stitch this other hem and I'm all done. I hope that you enjoyed that video and that you love your shorts. If you haven't gotten the pattern yet, it is available in my shop. I will put a link down below to get the pattern and to visit the sew along on my blog for lots more posts about sewing with knits and sewing this pattern. And if you haven't already, I would be so honored if you hit the little subscribe button below and then hit the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Happy sewing. Mm -hmm.